I think every bird photographer needs this. In this Photoshop tutorial, I'm gonna be using the generative fill tool to work on a photo, but you'll see that it can work magic in just seconds. I've had a little bit of bad luck this summer when it comes to bird photography. At this nature reserve near my house, I found a couple of nests. Now one was from a willy wagtail. I've actually made a video on that and I'll leave that at the end of this one you can check out. As well as a spangled drongo's nest. Now this photo that you're seeing right now on screen, this was of a spangled drongo. These little tiny spangled drongos had just hatched say about three or four days earlier. And the story behind this photo was that I was just checking out this drongo and it was coming in and landing. I had to get this perfect angle where I could see these little tiny spangled drongos coming up to get some food. But there was just this one annoying little thing was this branch would continually go across where the adult spangled drongo's face was. Now this spangled drongo had just landed in its mouth was a cicada or cicada tomato, tomato, however you like to say it. But they're kind of like a little tree dwelling insect that we have here in Australia. So the shot you're seeing on screen now was taken with my good old Nikon D850 with 80 to 400 millimeter combo. The settings were ISO 500. I was shooting at a f-stop of 7.1. The shutter speed was 1250th of a second. Now, if you're asking why I use such a high shutter speed on this shot, it's because those little tiny spangled drongos, when they come up for food, they shudder and jitter everywhere. They're asking for their food, so I had to freeze capture those. This branch, it went straight across the adult drongo's face. It was a pain, but we can actually fix that in Photoshop using generative fill. So let's go and do that right now. Just before I begin, I just wanna mention that I've already done everything in post-processing, what I would normally do with my bird photos. In other words, I've adjusted all my sliders. I've even done a little bit of denoise and sharpening with Topaz Denoise AI. And I've also cropped. That's the great thing about the Nikon D850 having a 45 megapixel sensor. I can crop in and not lose too much resolution in my photos. So to begin with, we're just gonna push in a little bit where this branch is going across this spangled drongo's face. Just come down and grab your zoom tool, click in, that will be enough. So the generative fill tool has been recently, well, relatively recently added to Photoshop. Now before this, you would have had to use things like the spot healing brush or the clone stamp. You need to come up to where your lasso tool is. I just use the middle tool on the lasso tool and I cut roughly around the branch. So let's just do that now. I just leave a little bit of space on each side of the branch there. So now we're gonna engage generative fill. To do that, you come up to where it says edit and underneath you'll see here it says generative fill. That's underneath content aware fill. Now, just a word of warning here, and this happened to me so I don't want it to happen to any of you out there. When I was using this on my Mac, it was working. I could see the generative fill underneath the edit tab. But when I went to my PC, that generative fill was missing and I was running like Photoshop 2024, but I couldn't see it anywhere. It just had me intrigued why it wasn't happening on that version on the PC. Turns out that you have to be running the latest version of Photoshop. You have to be running past the version 24.6. It turns out on my PC, I had both the 2023 version and 2024 version of Photoshop. So I deleted the 2023 version and then I updated the 2024 version. And sure enough, the generative fill came up underneath the edit tab. Okay, so let's go ahead and just click on generative fill. And it comes up with this little tiny box. You're just gonna go and hit generate. And watch this, it's pretty quick. So Photoshop's actually creating another layer at the moment for this fill. So the great thing about this generative fill in Photoshop is before you start deleting photos thinking, oh, they're no good, I can't use that photo. Give this a go first, and I think you're gonna see that it does a pretty amazing job. Now, isn't that amazing how Photoshop 
basically calculated the background bokeh as well as the wing on the cicada, the bird's beak and the bird's feathers and it basically filled it all in for me. It's just incredible. So before you go and delete any of those photos, give this a try because it will save your bacon eventually because there's sometimes where you'll take a shot and it's just one of those one in a million shots and you just can't get it again. Then have a go at using this generative fill tool in Photoshop. Now I also noticed down on this second little guy here, let me just push in. This second little spangled drongo, you can hardly see him, but there's his eye right around here. So this little guy is wanting his fair share of food as well. But again, we've got this annoying stick from the nest that's going across his beak. Again, I'm gonna use the generative fill tool. I'm just gonna grab my lasso tool. I'm just gonna go around the stick quickly. Go up to edit, generative fill, generate. So again, Photoshop has created another generative fill layer. There is a little tiny bit around that second bird's beak, but seriously, you could fix that with a clone stamp or the spot healing brush. Let me get rid of those generative fill layers and show you the difference. So we'll turn those off. Look at that. That's what it was like originally. Let me turn those layers back on. That quick. So you don't have to mess around. It does such an amazing job. And basically that photo has now been saved. So for example, if you wanted to keep going and doing more on this photo now, you could actually go down to your bottom layer on the background there and start doing more. Or if you needed to, you can actually collapse all of these layers. Just click on your top layer, hold down shift, click on your bottom layer, right click, and merge layers. So you could now keep on going with that photo. Say for example, you wanted to adjust the light or the colors. That's how quick and easy it is using that generative fill tool in Photoshop. So if you have a look at that other video where I was photographing that woolly wagtail's nest, the exact same thing happened to me. But once again, if I just use that generative fill tool from Photoshop, I could easily get rid of that branch going right through that woolly wagtail's head as it was feeding its little tiny young. So let's go out to full screen and see what this photo looks like now. Just hit F twice on your keyboard, control zero, that takes it out to full screen. Well, there you go, all you bird photographers out there. That is the generative fill tool in Photoshop. And remember, if you can't see that generative fill label underneath the edit tab, just double check to make sure what version you're running on Photoshop. Just make sure it's above 24.6. And plus the other great thing about that generative fill is that you can use it for so many other applications, including things like landscape photography. Never stop creating and I'll see you next time.